let's discuss the male external genital organs to begin with uh, the male genital system or male reproductive system include the testes the vas deferens or it is also called as the ductus deferens the seminal vesicles as well as the ejaculatory ducts all these are part of the male genital system or reproductive system okay so here are the testes then we have the epididymis here, the vas deferens or the ductus deferens going all the way and then uh, seminal vesicles will be on either side as well as the ejaculatory duct which will finally open into the, the urethra. So all these are part of the male genital system. The male external genital system includes two important uh, structures. One is the scrotum, this is the scrotum as well as the penis. So this is part of uh, today's discussion that is the male external genitalia which includes the, the scrotum as well as the penis. The scrotum as you know it is a very important covering or pouch of the lower part of the abdominal wall which extends below and it uh, uh, forms a pouch which will contain the testis as well as the even the lower part of the spermatic cords. This scrotum and its covering uh, or its layers are very important in the protection of the, the testes from any kind of external injuries, external viol vi uh, uh, violence or in sometimes even the changes in the temperature and other things. So it is a very important protective uh, covering. Then it also helps because it is separated from the abdomen and the pelvis and it is hanging below uh, the uh, perineum and that's why it will be maintaining a temperature which is lower than that of the body temperature. Actually the spermatogenesis will be much more uh, effective when it is at the temperature of 34 degree which is almost 2 to 3 degrees lower than the degree Celsius uh, compared to the body temperature. The normal body temperature is 37.2 and almost 2 to 3 degrees lower than that body uh, of that uh, body temperature will be very uh, essential for the, the normal spermatogenesis. That's why this uh, 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 the scrotum which is hanging below and which will contain the testis below the uh, abdomen and it is outside the body uh, that will help in the uh, maintenance of or regulation of this lower body temperature uh, lower temperature in the scrotum which helps in the spermatogenesis uh, it is uh, developed bilaterally uh, if you see the development and these are developed from the two uh, swellings which are called as genital swellings when you study the uh, development of the scrotum at that time you will see that it is developed from the uh, genital swellings which are on either side which later they join together to form the median raphe which is present in the scrotum but in case of the female the uh, these swellings will develop but they don't fuse together and they will form the labia major in case of the female okay the left of the scrotum if you see it is much more lower uh, uh, than that of the the right half of the scrotum okay so the left scrotum is below the right uh, scrotum uh, or the right half of the scrotum and even the testis will be uh, lower on the left side compared to that of the right side so these are the pictures showing the scrotum and here is the scrotum and this is the skin layer okay then we can see this is the cremaster muscle we'll talk about that one by one so what are the coverings of the scrotum or how the scrotum is formed so this is formed by, um, from uh, outside to inside that is the skin the outermost covering will be the skin this is the skin which is shown in a dark black color then inside that will be the daughter's muscle this is the the daughter's muscle as well as the colis fascia which are extending from the superficial fascia of the abdomen okay so daughter's muscle is a subcutaneous muscle okay which will be uh, covering the the scrotum then deep to that if you see there is the external spermatic fascia this is called as the external spermatic fascia i think it, it is nothing but the extension of the 
the uh, the wall of the abdomen that is from the external oblique muscle as well as its oponeurosis extend into the scrotum as the external spermatic fascia so this is the the external oblique muscle which is extending down into the scrotum as the external spermatic fascia then we have the next deep inside if you go then we have the cremaster again this is uh, the cremastic muscle as well as the fascia which is extending extending from the uh, uh, from the internal oblique muscle so this is the extension of the internal oblique muscle as the cremastic muscle as well as the fascia then deep to that we have the the internal spermatic fascia so internal spermatic fascia is nothing but the the uh, the transversalis fascia which is covering the whole of the abdomen the internal oblique doesn't uh, the transverse abdomen is doesn't extend into the scrotum but it ends here but the transversalis fascia which is extending into even into the scrotum okay which is behind the the uh, transverse abdominis muscle so this will extend into the scrotum as the internal spermatic fascia then deep to that is the extension of the peritoneal uh, layer that is the parietal layer okay which will extend as the the parietal layer of the tunica vaginalis parietal layer of the tunica this is the testis and here is the tunica vaginalis it has two layers the parietal layer as well as the visceral layer the parietal layer is the extension of the the uh, the, uh, the the uh, the the uh, the peritoneum okay so it is nothing but the extension of the peritoneum that is the the parietal layer of the tunica vaginis there is also visceral layer which is uh, when we study the the test itself at that time it will be the covering of the test itself it will study as the covering of the testis okay so these are the coverings of the scrotum or these are structures which will form the scrotum the outermost will be the skin so there is the skin which is nothing but the continuation of the skin, skin of the abdomen then we have the dotus muscle which is uh, coming from the the superficial fascia of the abdomen especially the fascia colis as well as the scapus fascia which form the the dotus muscle the, the subcutaneous muscle then deep to that will be the extension of the external oblique muscle as well as its aponeurosis as the external spermatic fascia in the blue color then we have the internal oblique muscle which will continue as the cremastic muscle as well as the fascia then deep to that is the transverse uh, uh, the transverse abdominis which doesn't extend into the scrotum so this is the transverse abdominis it doesn't extend into the scrotum but deep to that uh, transverse abdominis there is a fascia this is called as the transversalis fascia which will extend into the even to the scrotum as the internal spermatic fascia okay then deep to that is the peritoneal layer so it will extend into the again into the uh, the uh, uh, scrotum and it will form a uh, part of the the layers of the scrotum that is the parietal layer of the tunica vaginalis okay then we have the the visceral layer which will be studied along with the testis itself now coming to the blood supply of the testis uh, the scrotum sorry uh, now when we study the blood supply of the scrotum it will be supplied by uh, the important arteries like the superficial and deep external pudendal branches which are coming from the femoral artery uh, they are not shown here okay so uh, you should know that this is supplied by one is by the superficial as well as the deep uh, external pudendal branches which are coming from the femoral artery as well as the the posterior scrotal branches uh, which will be uh, coming from the internal pudendal artery coming to the venous drainage it will be draining into the great saphenous vein as well as the the internal iliac veins coming to the lymphatic drainage this will be into the horizontal set of super, uh, superficial inguinal group of lymph node because this is mainly from the uh, the skin uh, so it will be draining into the the as well as the superficial fascia which will be draining into the superficial inguinal group of limb nodes uh, especially the horizontal set we know that there are two kinds of sets one is vertical and the horizontal even the horizontal has medial as well as lateral and this will be draining into these horizontal group of superficial inguinal group of limb nodes coming to the nerve supply the anterior one third will be supplied by the two important nerves one is the ilioinguinal nerve as well as the genitofemoral nerve 
which will be uh, conveying the fibers from the L1 segment. So that's why whenever there is a radiating pain which is developing in the low end, especially for the uh, the uh, kidney pain or renal pain, it will extend all the way from the loin up to the groin, up to the, the scrotum and it will be radiated even uh, to a scrotum and as though uh, the pain is coming from the uh, testis. Okay, so this is by the ilioinguinal nerve as well as the genitofemoral nerves. Then the posterior two-thirds will be supplied by the posterior scrotal branches of the pudendal nerve as well as by the perineal branches of the posterior femur cutaneous nerve. Okay, so two important nerves will be supplying the posterior two-thirds. One is by the posterior scrotal branches of the pudendal nerve as well as the perineal branches of the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. And the fibers will be coming from S3 as well as S4. So it is a junction between L1 as well as S3 and S4. Okay. So this is, will be the nerve supply of the scrotum. Coming to the applied aspects. One is uh, commonly whenever there is edema of general edema of the body. You can see almost similarly you can see the edema of the scrotum. Sometimes it can be specifically related just to the, the scrotum, uh, the edema of the scrotum. We can also see because there are a lot of sebaceous glands, this is the skin, so there are sebaceous uh, glands and sometimes there can be a sebaceous cyst. Infection of uh, this uh, uh, scrotum might lead to sebaceous cyst formation. Then there can be hydrocele. Hydrocele, this is the picture showing the hydrocele. Okay. Then there can be also sometimes elephantiasis. This picture you can see the picture showing the elephantiasis where the lymphatic drainage of the scrotum is blocked and that too that leads to again uh, humanly engorged scrotum filled with mm, the uh, limb because of the blockage of the lymphatic system. Sometimes as I said the scrotum is developed from two genital swellings and they fuse in case of the male and to form the median raphe, median raphe will be at the center. Sometimes that uh, raphe, they, they might not be fused and that leads to a condition called as bifid scrotum. Here you can see, here it is fused but still you can see uh, it, there is a invagination inside uh, that is called as the bifid scrotum. Okay. So these are some of the applied aspects related to the scrotum edema of the scrotum sebaceous cyst formations hydrocele elephantiasis as well as the bifid scrotum okay now going to the the second important organ in case of the male uh, external genitalia that is the penis as you know the penis is a very important male organ of copulation so this is the uh, penis without the skin and this consists of two parts one is the root so here is the root this whole part is called as the root of the penis then the body so this is the whole thing is the body of the penis the root is uh, present in the superficial perineal pouch this is the superficial perineal pouch and uh, this will be present in the root especially the roots these are called as the roots formed by three masses one is the right and left crust on either side this is the right and left crust of the uh, the penis as well as this is called as the bulb of the penis okay so these are the three structures which will be formed the the root coming to the body it consists of the uh, important or uh, the structures one is called as the the carpora uh, cavernosum Corpora means the body, cavernosum, because it will have a lot of uh, cavity spaces okay, on either side. So this is called uh, the corpora cavernosum. Okay. Then at the center below that there will be uh, uh, corp uh, corpus spongiosum. So this is the corpus spongiosum which is extending from the, the bulb of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the penis. Okay. So this is the bulb. So from there, this mass of tissue will be extending. This is called as the corpus spongiosum, and there are two corpora cavernosum on either side above. Okay, okay. So the corpus uh, spongiosum will extend in the front, and it will form the 
the glans penis this is the glans penis which is nothing but the extension of the the corpora spongiosum cavernosum will end here just behind the glans penis so glans penis is an extension of the the corpora uh, spongiosum okay now this is the picture showing you uh, the, uh, the both uh, the perineum in case of female as well as the male and here you can see the same uh, roots of the uh, penis uh, that will be the the uh, on either side we have the uh, the crust of the uh, corpus uh, cavernosum and well as in the center we have the the bulb of the spongiosum so everything can be seen similarly in case of the female also but uh, it will extend not as penis but it will remain as a small structure called as clitoris but in case of the male mm, we have the root where we have the bulb at the center which is formed by the corpus spongiosum will it will extend into the body uh, the inferior in, in the inferior part as the the uh, corpus spongiosum itself and it continues in the front as the glans penis the two roots on either side which are the crust of the penis this will be forming the corpus spongiosum on either side this will be in pair and they will extend up to the the glans penis and they will end if you take a section of this uh, penis in the body then this is how it looks like these are the two uh, corpora cavernosa or cavernosum and this is the corpus spongiosum and at the center of the spongiosum you can see the opening of the the urethra so this is the opening for the the this is the uh, this uh, the urethra which is at the center of it almost at the center so here in this picture you can see uh, that the whole of the scrotum mm, is uh, uh, covered by uh, uh, the uh, uh, the um, the muscles on either side and especially the the bulb okay scrotum is much more below this is the bulb of the the uh, root of the penis where the bulb is covered by uh, the uh, there is a muscle here this is called uh, the bulbospongius muscle as well as a midline raphe will be formed because of the fusion of the two on either side and here also you can see the crusts are also covered by the the ischiocavernous muscle and all these muscles are important whenever there is a need of erection then at that time this construction or contraction of this muscle will help in the erection of the penis okay also uh, we'll see the structure uh, within the uh, the body of the penis and we'll try to identify if you can see here as we have seen there are three important structure there are two corpora cavernous on the top and below we have the corpus spongiosum and at the center we have the urethra and this will continue here this is how it looks like if we take a section all these pictures are taken from the internet and most of the pictures here are from the grace anatomy and if you take a section this is how the penis will look like okay we have the skin and fascia and everything then deep to that you can see on the top of this we can see dorsal vein of penis and deep to that we can see the the deep vein here as well as we see the dorsal artery as well as the dorsal nerve okay then coming below we can see the two corpora cavernosa these are called as cavernosa because there are spaces cavernous spaces and at the center of each corpora cavernosa we can see a deep artery okay so this is the deep artery on either side and this artery will uh, release the blood into this spaces called as the corpora cavernosa and all this uh, both the masses of this tissue are covered by a thick whitish uh, fibrous structure this is called as uh, the tunica albuginea tunica albuginea is covering both the corpora cavernosa but the uh, corpus spongiosum is not covered by a tunica albuginea this is important okay and here also you can see uh, there are spaces loosely uh, it looks like a sponge that's what is called as spongiosum and here you can see at the center there is urethra okay so the blood is released whenever uh, there is need of erection so the arteries will be releasing the blood into the spaces but there will be blockage of the venous drainage okay so when the blood is released into the spaces and there is blockage of venous drainage then it leads to accumulation of blood in this both the corpora cavernosa and because these are covered by the 
the tunic albuginea so there is a limited space for them to be occupied okay and they cannot go beyond that so at that time because these spaces are getting filled with blood lot of blood and outside it is covered by tunic albuginea this leads to erection of the penis but the same uh, tunic albuginea is not around the the uh, the corpus spongiosum this is important again it sh should not be there because at the center we have the urethra so if there is accumulation of blood here also there is a here also there will be release of blood but if there is accumulation of blood and it is confined okay by the tunic albuginea then it will uh, have a negative effect on the urethra itself right? it will compress the urethra and uh, then there will be difficulty in ejaculation so that's why there is no tunic albuginea around the corpus spongiosum but around the corpus uh, cavernosum on either side we have totally covered by the uh, the tunic albuginea okay so this structure should be remembered okay so all these pictures are again showing the same uh, uh, sections of the penis cross section of the penis showing you all the structures the two corpora cavernosum on either side and a corpus spongiosum below with the urethra in the center of the spongiosum and deep artery in the center of the cavernosum okay now coming to the uh, that was the mechanism of the uh, action of the penis the details you will study when you uh, go into the physiology part of it okay coming to the arterial supply arteries supplying the penis are uh, in three uh, pairs one is called as the arteries to the bulb okay if you can see here in this picture there are some arteries which are going directly to, to the bulb of the penis itself okay uh, these are called arteries to bulb or they are also called as the artery of the bulb of penis okay okay so they will be supplying mainly not only the bulb but also the proximal half of the cor corpus spongiosum here okay because the corpus spongiosum is continuation of the bulb so it will be supplying even the proximal half then we have the deep artery we have already seen the deep artery within the corpus cavernosum okay so these artery of penis supplies mainly the corpus cavernosum and as i said they will be releasing, releasing the blood into the uh, the um, the spaces which are called as cavernosa spaces okay then we also have the uh, the dorsal artery of penis we have seen when we see uh, the cross section on the top we have the dorsal artery artery of the penis this will be mainly supplying the glans penis so it goes all the way on the top of the the cavernosa and it supplies the uh, the uh, mainly the glans of the penis as well as even the uh, the distal part of the corpus spongiosum okay and all these are terminal branches of the internal pudendal artery so you should remember all these are three uh, arteries all these arteries are the terminal branches of the internal pudendal artery coming to the venous drainage venous drainage is by two uh, uh, unpaired veins one is called as the the superficial dorsal vein so here is the do deep dorsal and on the top we will have the superficial dorsal vein which will receive blood from the previous that is the foreskin the skin which is in front of or around the the glans penis as well as the skin of the penis as well as uh, and drains into the mainly to the uh, great saphenous vein or the large saphenous vein okay so the skin which is uh, called as the previous okay then the skin of the penis uh, will be drained into the the great saphenous vein but the deep uh, dorsal vein which you can see here this is the deep dorsal vein mainly drains into the prostatic venous plexus here okay which is around the prostate so this is the deep dorsal vein of penis okay coming to the lymphatic drainage the skin of the penis is drained into the superficial inguinal group of lymph nodes this is important if there is any kind of skin infections uh, on the uh, penis then it will be mainly draining into the superficial group of uh, lymph nodes but if there is uh, uh, any infection on the glans penis then it will be draining into the deep inguinal as well as the external iliac group of limb nodes okay uh, coming to the nerve supply the somatic it will be supplied by the somatic nerves parasympathetic as well as the sympathetic nerves all uh, nerves will be supplying this 
uh, 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 the penis okay the sensory mainly uh, carried by the dorsal nerve of penis that is a branch from the pudendal nerve even the sympathetic uh, uh, nerves are also uh, uh, are carried by the dorsal nerve of penis but the parasympathetic is by a plexus which is called as the prostatic nerve plexus which is coming from the cavernous nerves which will be parasympathetic nerves these parasympathetic nerves are really important for the erection in case of male um, and the vascular changes which lead to erection of penis is mainly because of this parasympathetic nerves which are coming from the cavernous nerves and which will be from the prostatic nerve plexus somatic nerves especially the sensory as well as the sympathetic nerves are by the dorsal nerve of penis which in turn is a branch from the pudendal nerve this is the physiology of erection we will not go into detail just i will uh, mention what ex exactly happens uh, in case of uh, the erection that as i said the uh, corpus cavernosum will be filled with blood and because it is totally covered by the tunic albuginum from around so and the spaces are filled with blood huge quantity of blood accumulation here will lead to uh, erection of the penis but here also there will be uh, uh, blood uh, which will be drained into the spaces here which will be giving the spongy uh, appearance but because it is not covered by a tunic albuginia so uh, uh, it's an advantage that it doesn't in turn compresses the uh, the uh, urethra okay uh, these two uh, uh, cavities or the corpus cavernosum uh, will be mainly helping in the erection of the uh, penis this is the normal one and here in case of the the cross section of penis in case of erect status where the space is filled with huge quantity of blood and the venous drainage is blocked okay so this is uh, just the uh, uh, the uh, brief introduction later in the physiology part you will re read about the details of exactly how it will be taking place finally coming to the development of the uh, developmental anomalies of the uh, the uh, penis as well as structures around it the first one is called as phimosis as I said, the prepuce is the foreskin which will be present in front of the, uh, the penis. Sometimes this might be blocked. Okay, so or a very small opening might be there. So this is called as phimosis. Okay, and the, uh, the, uh, the newborn or the child will have difficulty in maturating and the baby will start crying whenever it wants to uh, maturate because there is a very small opening uh, which will be called as phimosis. Then there is something called as hypospadiasis. Okay, this is the picture showing the hypospadiasis and at different levels. So this is usually the uh, external urethral meatus will be opening uh, almost uh, at the uh, glans penis in front of the glans penis. But sometimes it can open below hypo. This is called a hypo because it is opening below uh, in any of these sites. So there are different sites where it can open and here it can be scrotal, sometimes it can be perineal also. Okay, or it can be in the different parts of the shaft of the uh, body of the penis. Okay, so this is called a mid shaft and there are different names, glandular, subcornal. Okay, so these are all the positions where the external urethral meatus might open. Instead of opening into the glands, it might open below. This is called as hypospadiasis. Okay, here also you can see the urethral opening between the uh, uh, at the root of the scrotum near the bulb. Okay, uh, root of the scrotum uh, as well as the root of the penis itself. Okay, so there's the urethral opening. This all these are some of the different kinds of hypospadiasis. The sometimes it can open on the top, but it is rare. That is called a epispadias, just the opposite. It is hypo, and if it opens on the top of the penis then it is called as epispediasis okay sometimes the two uh, corpus or cavernosum uh, might not fuse together and then it leads to a condition called as bifid penis okay there might be two separate penis that is called as bifid penis because they are not joined in the midline in the median raphe 
so these are some conditions where we can see the phy phymosis so this is the small urethral opening uh, and this is this foreskin and here within the foreskin there is very small opening okay that is called as phymosis sometimes it can be retracted sometimes it cannot be sometimes it leads to uh, uh, partial uh, uh, retraction of penis this is called as the uh, paraphymosis and sometimes it can the paraphymosis totally block uh, the blood supply to the distal part okay because it is totally constricting and it is for it's strangulating this part of the penis leading to severe pain and the patient will be shouting in pain okay so uh, this is also condition of, uh, condition of the phimos uh, paraphimosis but with uh, strangulation okay so this should be surgically imme immediately uh, treated okay so these are all some of the conditions for the phimosis as well as the paraphimosis as well as strangulation there are these are the pictures showing the the hypospedias and these all pictures are taken from the internet uh, from different sources okay so here you can see uh, the different sites of opening hypospediasis is more common compared to the epispediasis epispediasis is very rare so uh, here also you can see uh, the developmental anomalies so the normal uh, scrotum and the penis here you can see the opening below in any side which is leading to hypospediasis here you also can see uh, this is how the uh, uh, the female genital system is formed by the two swelling sometimes the male will improperly develop and it looks like as though it is the female uh, genital system okay so these are some of the uh, anomalies the details of those kind of uh, different phimosis as well as hypospadias all those can be studied when you study the development in detail okay so if you have any doubts you can write to me and i will try to explain so these are my references thank you very much